One day at a supermarket in Utah, an 18 year old woman met this guy and he asked her to go out on a date. At first, the woman found this man attractive, so she agreed. And the next day, she met this man for lunch. When she sat down at the table and sat across from this man, she instantly felt ominous while looking at him. She claims when she looked in his eyes, it was almost if there was nothing behind them. And she could tell that something wasn't right about this man. Trusting her instinct, she got up from the table and went outside to a payphone where she had called her brother and told him that he needed to pick her up immediately. She explained how she was on a date with a guy and she could just feel that something wasn't right. Her brother agreed to come pick her up and while she was waiting for him, she went into the bathroom and hid until her brother arrived. When he arrived, she rushed out of the bathroom, got in his car, and drove home. The next morning, the brother woke up early because he had a summer job as a mailman and had to leave for his morning routes. When he walked outside, he heard some ruffling in the bushes, and when he went to investigate, a man wearing a beige jacket ran out from the bushes and ran away. The brother went inside the house, woke up his family, and told them what had just happened. As soon as he told his sister, it was a man in a beige jacket, she said, that was the man that I was on a date with yesterday. Three years later, Ted Bundy's face is all over TV. The woman was on a date with Ted Bundy three years before police had identified him as a murderer. The woman said that when she saw Ted Bundy on TV, she almost fell out of her chair because the way he looked in pictures was not the way he looked in real life. She said that when she was on a date with Ted Bundy, he would get a look over him when he was preying on his victims because she felt as if she was getting preyed on. The handsome face that you saw on TV was not the same face that she saw. These are the untold stories of Ted Bundy. Sandy Holt grew up in Tacoma, Washington, where she spent her days playing with her older brother and his best friend, Ted Bundy. Holt remembers Bundy had a cruel streak from a very young age. Sandy Holt recalls, he just didn't fit in. He had a horrible speech impediment, so he was teased a lot. She then described how a young Ted Bundy would build tiger traps in the woodland area that surrounded the neighborhood. She added, he had a temper. He liked to scare people. One little girl went over the top of one of Ted Bundy's tiger traps and got the whole side of her leg split open with the sharpened point of the stick that she landed on. Author Anne Rule was a former colleague of Ted Bundy. They both worked shifts together as telephone operators for a suicide helpline. In Rule's best-selling book, The Stranger Beside Me, she revealed it was his good looks that allowed his traits as a true sociopath to go under the radar. I liked him immediately. It would have been hard not to, she described in her book. As far as his appeal to women, I can remember thinking that if I were younger and single, or if my daughters were older, this would almost be the perfect man. Two years later, when Bundy stood trial in court for his horrific crimes, young women would surge toward the public gallery to get a closer look at the serial killer, even passing love notes to his defense team. It was this attractiveness and charm that aided Bundy in his ability to lead his victims like lambs to the slaughter once he had gained their trust. In 1977, my mom was a student at FSU and was also in a sorority and one night was out at a bar with some sorority sisters. She said she was approached by a very handsome and charming man who she swears was Bundy. They danced for a while and eventually he asked her questions about where she lived and other personal questions. She got weird vibes so told him in a sorority house but then left to go to another party. He was living a block away from her at the time and actually went on to murder several girls while they were sleeping in their sorority house. It was not her sorority but this happened about a week or two 
after she was approached by him at that bar. My mom fits his usual profile since she was pretty with long brown parted down the middle hair. Still gives me goosebumps whenever she tells me about it. Elizabeth Klopfer was in a turbulent six-year relationship with Ted Bundy. In 1981, Klopfer wrote in her book, The Phantom Prince, My Life with Ted Bundy, we would be getting along fine, and then a door would slam and I would be out in the cold until Ted was ready to let me back in. I'd spend hours trying to figure out what I had done or said that was wrong, and then suddenly he would be warm and loving again, and I would feel needed and cared for. In 1974, Klopfer reported Bundy's suspicious behavior to the police. During a recorded interview, she revealed Ted went out a lot in the middle of the night, and I didn't know where he went. Then he napped during the day and I found things, things I couldn't understand. She also uncovered his kill kit, a bag containing ropes, garbage bags, a ski mask, handcuffs, an ice pick, and a lug wrench. Bundy claimed all these items were for his own protection, but they were later used as evidence against him in court. Ted Bundy's former defense attorney, John Henry Bowne, revealed that he knew the killer was born evil when they first met in 1975. Bowne said, Ted was the only person in my 40 years of being a lawyer that I would say that he was absolutely born evil, adding, I got that feeling right away when I first met him. He was manipulative. He was dishonest. He seemed very believable. But my intuitive side said no. He's not telling the truth about a lot of this. Bound struggled emotionally with defending the case as his girlfriend was murdered in California a few years earlier during his time at law school. The murder was never solved. He said the comment, the one I still get chills about, is when Bundy told me the reason you've been my lawyer for so long is because we're so much alike. What bothered me as he would think that we were a lot alike, that we were friends. I've never considered myself a friend of his. On October 2nd, 1974, Ted Bundy murdered 16-year-old Nancy Wilcox in Utah, and a week later, he had the urge to kill again. Teenager Rhonda Stapley was walking home when Bundy pulled over in his Volkswagen Beetle, and she accepted a ride from him, and then he turned away that didn't seem like the normal route to go. Stapley remembers, he continued to drive up one canyon and then into another, never stopping. And that's when the ride started to feel uncomfortable. He turned in his seat, so he was almost facing me, and I leaned in really close. I thought he was going to kiss me, but instead he said, you know what, I'm going to kill you. And he put his hands on my throat and started squeezing and shaking me. Stapley slipped in and out of consciousness during the attack. When she could see Bundy 20 feet away from the car, gathering his killing tools, she ran for her life. Stapley tripped and fell into a river that swept her away. That accident had saved her life. In 1974, Ted Bundy had began to impersonate a police officer so he could lure away his victims. Teenager Carol DeRanche from Utah will never forget the day she crossed paths with Bundy at a shopping mall. DeRanche recalled how Bundy approached her and said her car had been broken into. He held out his police badge and recommended that she go down to the station with him to report the crime, which she agreed to do. In the documentary series, Conversations with a Killer, the Ted Bundy tapes, DeRanche recalled he headed down a side street and then he suddenly pulled over up on the side of a curb up by an elementary school and that's when I just started freaking out and he grabbed my arm and he got one handcuff on one wrist. I had never been so frightened in my entire life. I thought, my god, my parents are never going to know what happened to me. Unlike other unfortunate victims, DeRanche was able to fight off Bundy and escape with her life. She was one of the key witnesses who helped bring down the notorious serial killer. These have been the untold stories of Ted Bundy. If you guys did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe with post notifications on. And without further ado, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.